I would like to welcome you again. This is Hulda Offenbauer. Finally, stop eating the animals. I think this is a very important topic that concerns all of humanity. If you think logically and ask yourself, why is man the way he is? Some say that man is like an animal. This is not so far-fetched. What makes a human being? On the one hand, we have manipulation. On the other hand, there are one's own imprints and tradition, the beliefs one has. And then there is the area of nutrition, which is influenced by whether one eats animal or animals or not. We all know the saying, you are what you eat. There is a good saying by Leo Tolstoy, as long as there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. There is a deep truth in that. As long as people slaughter and eat animals, they will also slaughter each other. There will be wars. Let's look at factory farming. It is a terrible picture. The animals are tortured. They are penned up. They are aggressive in behavior. They are sad. They are afraid. Especially when it then goes to the slaughterhouse. The feelings of the animals naturally pass into the blood and into the cells. And that's what humans then eat. You are what you eat. You know, I worked for doctors and when I took an ECG from a patient, she, sa she said, I'm so embarrassed because I have so many pimples on my back and a rash. I got that after a blood transfusion. I found out that I got the blood from a dark skinned person from Nigeria, she said. That means she got foreign blood and what was stored in it was transferred to her body. Turn on your common sense for once. How much more will what we eat, the nature and the feelings of this animal naturally transfer to our bloodstream and the whole human being? You know, we have a neighbor who says he can't live without his daily portion of pork. Accordingly, his life is also. We noticed in his garden that where before he had beautiful, colorful flowers, now he has concreted everything. You can see the character of people here in the countryside because there are hardly any flowers in their gardens. There are mostly just trees, meadow and simply designed plots. You should see our garden. It is filled with colorful flowers, bushes, trees, everything that nature offers us. That's how you can tell the difference. We know that those who have bare gardens eat meat. You are what you eat. In the Gospel of Perfect Life, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, this is why I came into the world, that I might abolish all blood sacrifices and the eating of animals and birds slaughtered by men. This was his mission. Did he succeed? Or do people still eat flesh from their brothers and sisters? From their brothers and sisters, yes. Jesus calls the animals our brothers and sisters. And Jesus made great sayings about those who eat animals. To the hunters he said, Woe to the hunters, they themselves shall be hunted. Unfortunately, the church has messed with the Bible a lot and has taken out all the passages where it is about vegetarianism and the love of animals and put in other passages. For example, the passage where the prodigal son comes home and the father gives him a ring and puts a beautiful dress on him and slaughters the fatted calf. 
That was not in the Bible originally. That was added. It originally said that he prepared fruits or vegetables, but not a slaughtered animal. Also, as Jesus appeared as the risen Lord to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, it was added that they ate fish. But no, they did not. They had fruit. And so the Bible was changed just so they could continue to indulge in their meat eating. They had even poured liquid lead down the throats of the vegetarians at that time. If the Bible had not been changed, the animals would not have had to die. How much blood would not have flowed here? Jesus said, and again I say to you, anyone who seeks to possess the body of any creature for food, pleasure or gain, defiles himself by doing so. Who gives us the right to establish a hierarchy and determine you I kill now so that you end up on my plate? Peace begins with our own plate. We do not have the right to kill. You shall not kill. There is nothing to discuss. There are also no excuses like those of the hunters who say we must intervene so that nature regulates itself. Because exactly therefore, because the human being has intervened, the imbalance has arisen. That was never in the sense of Jesus Christ that we eat the animals. At present, I notice a change of consciousness among people. More and more are beginning to think, to question, they are beginning to feel what is here on their plate. A piece of dead animal. It had to die so that I can eat it. I am sitting here in our garden in Burgenland. The birds are chirping, the bumblebees are buzzing, the frogs are jumping into the pond, and behind me, the neighbors, is a flock of Cameroon sheep, where there are just little lambs, and I wonder, how long will they be allowed to live? Until Easter lamb? I hope that this audio is shared diligently, and people will wake up. How much longer are you going to eat the animals? It all comes back to humanity and each individual is here in responsibility. Thou shalt not kill. I wish you God's richest blessings.